Oh, well, Dino, um, first off, welcome to Hume City um, and, and congratulations on the appointment. Can you sort of talk us through um, what you define the technical director role to be? Because it's different, I think, in almost every single club. So what does the technical director role mean to you? Yeah, look, I, I mean, when I first accepted the job, it was it was important, you know, speaking to the board and uh, certainly to Louis, the senior coach, about exactly what the role entailed. I had a fixed uh, vision, I guess, of what I wanted to achieve and where the way, having spent a lot of time in Europe, at different clubs all, all around Europe, working out how they get the very, very best out of their youngsters to produce players for their own first team. There was a lot of systems that we had to put in place, so I just wanted to establish that with the club, that that was the direction they wanted to go in, which it was. Very much a hands-on position. I didn't want to be one where I was turning lights on and off or spending a lot of time on a computer, because you've seen my computer skills. Um, but really being hands-on with the coaches, with the players, from top to bottom. And I think once that was established, then I really couldn't refuse the job. Can you describe your relationship with Louis? Because I believe you've had a relationship prior to joining Hume. Yeah. And, um, and also, how much of a factor that was in you deciding to ultimately come here? Oh, look, it's a big factor. I mean, um, I had a technical director, as you know, last year when I was down along Thunder Coach, and Stuart Munro was really, really good with me, really supportive. And from my point of view, it was very, my very first time I'd been a senior coach that I wasn't the most experienced coach at the club and where I could bounce ideas. And he, he had an uncanny knack of seeing something that I never saw. So I utilised a lot of the way I think, the way Stuart helped me out, and I thought that's where I could help Louis. You know, Louis four years into the job this is his fourth season as a senior coach and it's tough it's a it's a it's a good standard of football second tier in australia a lot of pressure comes with the job and and experience only gained by time and and getting into situations which are good bad and indifferent and dealing with them so i think if i can help louis through those periods and try and give him opportunities to make situations better not just with him but also his assistants and with the players just to 16 years of experience I guess but the relationship with Louis goes back to when he was 19 I actually played against him when he was about 15 or 16 when he made his debut when he was at St Albans but we really didn't know each other then but we've been really good friends and really respected each other all the way through the journey and then when I started to coach against him you know when we got back in the uh, into the VPL with Southern Stars and playing against Hume which are two Turkish clubs you know he, I've got a lot of respect for Louis he was a wonderful goalkeeper in his own right and you know he's developing into a really good young coach. We're used to seeing you as a senior coach at clubs. Um, the technical director role is a bit new for you. Um, what are you sort of personally hoping to get out of the experience at Hume? A lot of people have asked me what you're going to do after 16 years as a senior coach where you're making those decisions on game day and I think where it's been really good Louis said look it's no good not utilising my experience on game days so we haven't really defined exactly what my role will be in the friendlies I've assisted one of the analysis because uh, we do a lot of analysis on the game itself um, we compare notes all the time I point out things I've seen to help him as did Stuart with me last year he'd see something that I didn't see because I'm at ground level I'm up maybe in the stand and seeing a different view to it so I think the more that we can keep working together learn what each other's strengths are and weaknesses and help each other to make him want a better coach to make the first team a better team and then push that down because for me the first team's the most important that's the reason we're all here the first team and then we drive all of those you know whether it's their training methods their game the way the first team plays we push that down to our 20s 18 so look it's really exciting it's it's different um, but you know I've run an academy before with Derby we were back in the uh, late 90s to early 2000s which I thought was a really good success success I work with a lot of elite young players so I feel really confident that once I get involved with the 20s the 18s all the way down to the 12s which I've already had access to them already uh, it's, it's, it's a really new challenge because I haven't done it for a while and it's you know I'm bringing back memories back into the late 90s and into 2000s and we've got some really good young players who are potentially our, our aim is to get them into our first team. There's a big emphasis on sort of using digital technology um, for things like session plans and lineups and, 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 and more. Just how important is it to embrace that sort of technology as we move into the future where there's you know, more possibilities and things like that? Without doubt. I mean, you only have to look what happens just on our own television with Fox Sports, you know, the way they've got all their systems there to show us where things are going right or wrong. You go into Europe, they're all across it and they're spending, you know, not just hundreds of thousands but millions of dollars on their technology and when I got interviewed for the job and we talked about where does the future lie where, where do we want to be and 
our ambition, you know, from the very top with Steve as the boss and Louis as the senior coach and the supporting staff said, you know, we want to be the best NPL club in the country. So I said, well, if that's the case, we, then we've got to get with the times and we've got to try and push the button and push the boundaries a lot higher than where we currently are, even though we've got one of the best, if not the best facility in Victoria. We've got a fabulous place to come to work. You actually drive in here and you know you're coming to work. It's 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 a fresh, I mean, I love coming in. Breath of fresh air, I was about to say. And it's, uh, look, I think it's really exciting that we have that ability to, one, come into a facility like this. And then if we can add that to some of the technology, which is the digital movement of how we play with our set pieces, with our shape, the way we press. It's helped the players. We've got a lot of feedback from the players where they've enjoyed that because they've seen it. And then we've actually tried and adapted that onto the pitch. And um, and then it makes the game a lot easier. You know, there's an old saying, a picture tells a thousand words. And a lot of us as coaches talk and talk and talk. But if we can show them and let them demonstrate it, you know, I'm, I'm even seeing in the practice matches certain things we've been working on, you're seeing them now start to reflect themselves in the game. And just a word on the squad, um, it's all but finalised now, looking ahead to round one. Are you happy with how the squad's looking? Are you happy with where they're at from a training point of view as well in pre-season? Yeah, look, I am. I mean, it's, it's pre-season's always difficult. You know, I go back to my experience at Gully, where we were unbelievably good in pre-season, but we all know that didn't particularly end well. Um, Dandenong last year, was we were quite consistent. So as a senior coach, and I'm looking at now in Louis' shoes, as, you know, we've drawn two and um, won two, and we've played some really good stuff and we've got better by each game. So I think where he's at right now, and I won't put words into his mouth, and we've just been away to Adelaide and we've spent the whole weekend together, four days with a whole coaching group. We're pretty confident that we're on the right track. Now, what does that mean? What does that equate to? Not really sure yet, but I think some of the things that we didn't see in round practice match one and practice match two, we absolutely saw it in three and four. So I think they're the positive signs and we've been drilling into those. Now we've got Bentley on Sunday, and we're going to want to see like another improvement from the, the, the Adelaide trip so if we can go one more notch to see if we're really going in the direction we believe we can and if we do then we're going to be a difficult side to play against um, so we're pretty confident we're on the right track but we all know you know we're hoping to get off to a good start a good start really does help your season along but you know we'll just you know the old cliche we'll take one game at a time it's all about round one at the moment that's the focus the preparation is the practice matches, not just for the first team, but all of our teams at the club, and um, we'll tackle it one game at a time. And just finally, coming back to the facilities, um, you've obviously been around a lot of Victorian clubs as a player and a coach. Um, just what do the facilities mean to the staff and the players, and how can they help the players sort of reach another level? Look, I've noticed, like, if we talk about the players first, when players come in, the new players who have just signed, I'm not saying it blows them away, but they come and think this looks like a professional organisation. They come in, they get their training kit, the changing rooms. For me, it's very, very similar to like a European, like a top level, not maybe the top, top like Manchester United, Manchester City and the big clubs in Europe, but like Premier League clubs and Championship Club training facilities. So you come to work thinking you come into a, a workplace. And I think that just then gets when you go on the park and do your work, where you're doing the analysis on the video, where you're going through your debriefs, whatever we're doing, we're trying to do it in a professional way. It's important that we're all in uniform, we all look the same, we just travelled away and everybody dressed the same in the first team with coaches as well. And it just becomes one. And, and what we try and do is push that all the way down from the under 12s and even the sub juniors like the you know, the eights, nines and tens and takes it right to the top. Um, and I think from that point of view, for a coach, when you come to a facility and you've got everything you want with the balls, the cones, the bibs, you've got the space to work on a full pitch, which, you know, I'm big on coaching 11 v 11, Louis is as well. And you need a big pitch to play 11 v 11, where some facilities in the past, you know, we've played on half a pitch. So the facility is absolutely massive. And for me, that's the benchmark that then sets up everything for where we want to take this club.